So in this video we're going to talk about the goods market and specifically two things. First, uh, goods market adjustment. Uh, this adjustment uh, concerns the question how an equilibrium in the goods market is attained. So basically how do we get to the equilibrium if we are not in equilibrium? Uh, so economists usually call that uh, adjustment, uh, so meaning the adjustment of the economy towards the equilibrium. And second, uh, a related question, how does the economy react to shocks and or policy? So for example, a demand shock, a shock of uh, investment demand by firms, or uh, a policy shock, meaning an, a change in government expenditures or such, how does the economy uh, attain a new equilibrium after uh, such a shock or change in policy? Um, well, let's do one first, uh, the question of how the equilibrium is attained and I'm going to go to a new page and begin with uh, the picture of the goods market itself right on the top here what we're talking about. So here we have uh, the goods market, that is aggregate demand on this axis and income on this axis. Then we have the autonomous components of demand on the bottom here, which we've called A, which is C0 uh, minus C1T plus I plus G and uh, the endogenous component of demand uh, being expressed in that slope uh, C1 responding to Y. Mm. So uh, what's missing is of course the production line which has this slope of 1 here, slope of 1, um, or uh, equivalently here, 45 degree line. So we have our equilibrium right at this point, and the question now is uh, how do we get to this point if we are not at this point? And to uh, get to that question, I'm just going to erase this here, no, there was one too many. Uh, and make some space and consider a situation where we are on the aggregate demand curve right here. Now uh, what first can we say about this blue point? At this blue point uh, demand Z here is higher than income Y. Right? We can see that in this difference uh, Z minus Y at this point is positive. There's a positive difference between demand and income. Different way to say that is that we have uh, excess aggregate demand. And the aggregate demand curve Z lies above the production line, which is this red one on the top here. Now, uh, we know though that by definition, uh, this aggregate demand is, uh, is equal to income. And since income is Y, we get from this point, we move towards the right. That's not pretty. Let's try again. We move to this point. Okay, there we go. And then at this point, uh, income has increased, and the increased income in turn leads to an increase in demand. We're getting to this point. The second blue point, uh, which is basically this triangle 
uh, which you know as rise over run uh, for this Z function. Uh, so that's the increase in the high demand leads to high income, which uh, income is equal then to production, but the increased income triggers another increase in demand, which gives us, which leads us to this point. I'm going to make it yellow. And so we go in a stepwise uh, fashion towards the green point until we're at the equilibrium. Just, just for completeness, let's consider the other way around. So, um, let's suppose that we are here and we're on the aggregate demand curve, but aggregate demand is less than production at this point. So that Z minus Y is negative, we have uh, negative excess demand, or put differently, we have excess supply. Now, what does that mean? Well. Uh, demand needs to adjust and it does so in this fashion decrease in income the decrease in income produces a further decrease in demand so we're getting to this point and then uh, again in a stepwise fashion we're moving towards the left which essentially means here we have Y star if we're to the left of Y star we're going to move towards the right if we're towards the right of Y star, we're going to move towards the left, which means that wherever we are, we're going to move towards equilibrium output. That is what we mean by adjustment. Second, let's consider a shock. I'm going to draw the same diagram again and include here my autonomous expenditures aggregate demand function with the well-known properties. Um, we know that this A, I'm going to include it again here, C0 minus C T plus I plus G. We know that this distance here, the difference between A and 0 is the sum of autonomous expenditures C0 I G less taxes. Now what happens uh, if uh, there's a boom in investment and investment increases? Now let's consider that. We will consider an invest investment shock. No. Let's write this such that at least some people can read it. Investment boom. So we have a, a boom in physical investment, so more and more uh, firms are buying machinery and cars and computers and such. And we have here in the diagram, we have our production line with a slope of 1. And we have our initial equilibrium, which we presume has been attained. Uh, so we are at this point, which is Y star 1. And now uh, we get the investment boom. What happens? Uh, since I is one component of this here, and then we have a shift in I, uh, of a magnitude, magnitude delta i. Delta is the Greek uh, symbol uh, for capital letter delta. Uh, this triangle is the uh, Greek symbol for the capital letter delta and is often used to signify the change in a variable. So this is the change in investment and that change in investment is going to produce an upward shift in the demand function by some such delta i so that the intercept rises nothing else has changed so that the slope of uh, z2 is the same as before c1 but we do have a new intercept and that new intercept lies towards the right of 
uh, the old uh, Y star, the old equilibrium output. So the question is, exactly as in the previous example, how do we get to this point? Well, if we are initially here, the boom gets us to this point, and exactly as we had on the previous page, uh, this increase in demand leads to an increase in production and income. The increase in income leads to a further increase in demand so that we get into the step stepwise fashion to uh, the new equilibrium until we ultimately arrive at Y star 2.